Fear not, Scranton. This is Pastor Elliot Cook here at Jackson Street Baptist Church here with some encouraging words for you. You hear enough discouragement, negativity in your life. I'm sure of it because I hear enough of it and I've had enough of it. And that's one of the reasons why I turn to God's holy word. Every day I'm in it, I, I relish it, I, I need it because there's a lot of negativity out there and I don't want you to get discouraged, Scranton. Um, I don't know why, but there are some people who like to uh, pile on. They like to discourage you. They like to, to stand on your back and feel better about themselves. If you're not doing well, then they can feel better about their terrible situation in life. Their lot in life becomes bearable or easier. And I guess I understand that. I, I always feel a little better when somebody gets behind me in line. When I'm in a long line, somebody gets behind me, well, at least I'm not last anymore. When as the line behind me grows, uh, I feel better about my position. And yeah, so I, I understand the temptation to think that way, to feel that way. But in life, when somebody's down, uh, to discourage them, to dissuade them, to pile on and be that negative uh, person, uh, encouraging them to give up, that should never be. We all ought to be cheerleaders for one another. Uh, today's story from the scriptures, from Luke chapter 8, starting in verse 51, we see uh, this being lived out in, in a situation that Jesus encountered. Now, Jesus had met Jairus. He had asked him to come and heal his daughter. And on the way, he was distracted with a woman who needed healing, and he dealt with her. And then he came in verse 51, and we read, When he arrived at the house of Jairus, uh, he did not let anyone go in, in with him except for Peter, John, and James, and the child's father and mother. Meanwhile, all the people were wailing and mourning for her. Stop wailing, Jesus said. She is not dead, but asleep. They laughed at him, knowing that she was dead. But he took her by the hand and said, My child, get up. Her spirit returned to her at once, and she stood up. Then Jesus told them to give her something to eat. Her parents were astonished, but he ordered them not to tell anyone what had happened. <laughs> like the whole world wasn't about to find out what had happened, that this story could be um, somehow uh, not repeated time and time again, spread to all the towns and villages around. You know, Jesus is delayed. The father thought his child was merely sick, and, and as they're coming, she expires. And the crowd that's there praying uh, for this little girl uh, turns into a group of mourners. Now, they may have been relatives, distant relatives, uh, it may have been neighbors, or even people from the community, from their village, had gotten together. And when they heard that the child had died, they started weeping and wailing. Okay, this is the scene, and you can imagine how the father and mother, their hearts were heavy and sad, believing that their child was dead, for that is what everyone was telling them. And Jesus is saying, no, 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 she's just sleeping. Come on, you, th you five, let's go in together. Three of his disciples, two of the parents, they go in with Jesus to be with uh, uh, the, the child who had expired. She's dead there, and he says to her, um, my child get up and she her spirit returns to her uh, and she is revived and and she stands up at once and he brings her out of the house and and shows her to the crowd and says be useful give her something to eat <laughs> you know um and they're like she was dead i went in you know there was no breath left in her and it was been a while it's been you know 20 minutes, 30 minutes. How did this happen? Jesus had power over sin and death. He laid down his own life and took it back up. He was able to raise this little girl from the dead because he is indeed the Messiah. And this is one of the many miracles that Jesus was proving who he was. And what a great story. But what I want you to focus on is the negativity of the people around that family. And it was almost like, give up. She's dead as a doornail. She's not coming back. Don't bother the teacher. Nothing can be done. She's beyond hope. And so is your family. 
just start grieving with us. And the temptation, I'm sure, was for the mother and father to start weeping and wailing and joining in and making the final preparations for her burial later that day, you know, and, and they're ready to just give up. But Jesus doesn't let them. He encourages them. He brings some good people of faith along with him to encourage this, this young family. And he raises the daughter from the dead. You know, he's able to do that because he shuts out the negativity outside. And he allows only those who have hope in the inner sanctum. And sometimes, dear... Christian, that's what you need to do. There are some family and friends that you need to keep at a distance. Their negativity in your life is not welcome at certain times in your life, and you have to keep them at a distance, unfortunately, because they're not people of faith, and they're not encouraging you. They are discouraging you and dissuading you from following the Lord to believing in miracles and that he wants to provide for you and bless you. Today, whether it's the coronavirus, the election, um, perhaps you're down south watching this video, you know, with the, with the hurricanes that keep ravaging the cities and, and uh, towns along the coast, or perhaps you're out in California with the wildfires, perhaps you're in an inner city and the rioters have been burning businesses uh, for the hundredth day in your, in your great city and you're so discouraged, and you're willing to listen to the negative uh, that's spinning around you, and there's a lot of it, and, and Satan loves it. He wants you to be discouraged. He wants you to be distracted. He doesn't want you turning to God. He doesn't want you to, to be reading his word and be in his word. It's one of the reasons why I'm driven to the word every day, because I have enough negativity in my life uh, just with turning on the news, uh, just by hearing and reading in the newspaper and hearing from people in the community the discouragements that we're all faced with. Instead, I choose to be encouraged to receive positive messages um, from God, uh, which are truthful, and he doesn't lie to us. And when he makes a promise, he will never, never, never break it. And you can take that to the bank. This family uh, ends up being greatly astonished and encouraged. They have their daughter back. You can have uh, life back again if you will turn inward uh, and join together with those of like faith, those who are still hoping. You know, a church is a place where you can find that. Here at Jackson Street, your own church, get back into fellowship, get back into positive, hopeful people who are people of faith, or at least looking towards God for answers instead of being negative and discouraging and trying to drag you away from faith and God. Um, where are they heading? If they don't have faith, they don't know Christ. And they're trying to take you where they're going. And it's not a good place. You don't want to join with them. You don't even want to listen to them. So shut them out and reserve that time. On Sunday mornings, we meet at 10 a.m. I don't know when your church is meeting, but get back into fellowship, Scranton. Don't believe the lies of Satan. He wants to discourage you. He's roaring about the city, looking for individuals that he can devour. And he, he tries to separate us from the flock. And one who's alone is much easier prey for him uh, to devour than those who are huddled together and can defend themselves. This is what is happening in our society. And I pray for you, Scranton. I pray right now, and I'll pray with you right now, to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You know, if you are trusting and believing that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, then, or you're ready to, to trust and believe in that simple historical truth, then perhaps you're ready to pray this prayer and become a Christian. The prayer goes something like this. You've heard it before on my hashtag Fear Not Scranton messages, and you can go back and hear all of them. They're there for you. Just type it in your, your search bar, and you'll find it. 
hashtag fear not. There's over 200 messages from this year, ranging on a number of different topics, different passages. You can search through them and find them and, and uh, uh, listen to them again or watch them for the first time. But they almost always end with a prayer like I'm going to pray with you now. So if it's your desire to become a Christian, to ask forgiveness for your sins, to open yourself up anew and afresh to the hope that you have in Christ Jesus, then pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I am a sinner in need of your forgiveness. I am so lost in my negativity, and I turn to you the first time in such a long time, Father, uh, finally willing to receive some positive in my life. I do believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sin, and now I ask for forgiveness, that you would make me your child. I don't want to go back to my old ways. I want to live for you. I want to be your child. Instead of being negative, I now want to live in you and be positive. And I ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you just became a Christian. You have some needs, some spiritual needs. We're a church. We can help you. You need a Bible. You have a prayer request. You have questions. Engage back with your churches, Scranton. It is so important to stay positive and to have an effect upon your neighbors, your coworkers, your relatives, your friends. It's so important to lift them up and not discourage and bring them down. Um, please, Scranton, turn to the Lord. Uh, and remember, Scranton, fear not. God loves us. Till tomorrow, God bless.